August 2nd, 2027. It will begin like any other day. The sun will rise. The world will stir. Traffic will move. The sky will start to dim. And then, for 6 minutes and 23 seconds, the sun will disappear. Not behind clouds. Not into the horizon. It will vanish. Blocked entirely by the moon. A total solar eclipse. The longest since 1991. A path carved through continents by shadow and silence. Total eclipses happen often, but not like this. Most last just two or three minutes. This one will feel endless, as if the sun has died. April 13th, 2029. It has a name, Apophis. In ancient Egyptian myth, it was the serpent of chaos, the eternal enemy of the sun. In modern astronomy, it's a rock. 340 meters wide, hurtling through space at over 30,000 kilometers per hour. And on April 13th, 2029, it will pass so close to Earth, it'll fly beneath some of our satellites, just 31,000 kilometers above the surface. No impact is expected, but it will come close enough to be visible to the naked eye in parts of Europe, Africa, and Asia, a moving star tracing the sky with silent menace. When it was first discovered in 2004, early models showed a small but real chance of impact, enough to trigger emergency simulations. That danger has since been ruled out. But the flyby remains one of the closest in recorded history for an object this size. We will watch it drift past, measure its motion, study its surface, and remember that even in the silence of space, chaos still moves, and this time, it missed. December 22nd, 2032. You won't see it happen, not with your eyes, but telescopes across the Earth will be pointed upward, waiting. An asteroid designated 2024 YR4 will collide with the moon. A small object, only a few meters wide, nothing dramatic, but on that day, a new crater will be born. A burst of dust in a vacuum. No flames, no shockwave, just motion and silence. For astronomers, it's a rare opportunity to witness impact in real time, to study the physics of collision without atmosphere in the way. But for the rest of us, it's something else. A cosmic preview. Because the only reason it's hitting the moon is luck. It could have been Earth. Same orbit, different timing. So when this one strikes the moon, it will still feel like a warning, because next time, it might not miss. July 24th, 2037. Just before sunrise, the sky will shift, and for a brief moment, four celestial bodies will align. Venus, Saturn, Mercury, and the star Regulus, all clustered in a tight arc above the eastern horizon. No telescope required, just eyes and attention. It will look deliberate as if the universe paused its chaos to draw a straight line. These alignments aren't rare because they're complex. They're rare because they require patience. Years of orbital drift, tiny corrections, gravity at work like clockwork, setting up a view no one asked for, and few will notice. But for those who do, it will feel different, as if the sky is speaking in symbols, as if the planets themselves are trying to be seen, not because they have something to say, but because we've forgotten how to listen. October 1st, 2044. When a planet swallows a star, stars don't just vanish. And when they do, something extraordinary is happening. On this day, Venus, the brightest planet in our sky, will pass directly in front of Regulus, one of the brightest stars in Leo. A planet will occlude a star. Perfect alignment, no explosions, no flares, just disappearance. One moment, Regulus will be there, the next, gone. Events like this are called occultations, but this one is rare, because it's not the moon doing the hiding. It's not some distant asteroid. It's Venus, a planet so familiar, yet so hostile it melts metal, blocking a star so massive it burns five times brighter than the sun. And for a few minutes, the universe will give us a magic trick, a star eaten by a planet and then returned, unharmed, unexplained, just another secret. August 15th, 2050, Mars at the edge of reach. Every couple of years, Mars gets close, but in 2050, it won't just be close. It will be enormous, burning red, low in the sky, 
so bright it could cast shadows, a perihelic opposition, when Earth passes directly between Mars and the Sun, while Mars is near its closest point to the Sun. The result? A Martian encounter unlike anything in decades. Through a backyard telescope, you'll see its surface, not just a dot, but features, dark regions, polar caps, even signs of dust storms swirling across an alien desert. For a few weeks, Mars will no longer feel like a distant world. It will feel like a destination, a place we could touch, because by 2050, we might already be there. Boot prints in red dust, machines crawling across its soil, signals bouncing between two worlds. But even if we're not, that night, when you look up and see Mars burning at the edge of reach, you'll understand why we've always wanted to go. July 28, 2061. It's been here before, when the pyramids were young, when Rome burned, when Napoleon marched, and in 2061, Halley's Comet returns again, a visitor bound by rhythm. Every 76 years, it loops through the solar system, a frozen relic trailing light. For a few nights, it will streak across the sky visible to the naked eye, a shimmering arc of dust and memory. Halley isn't the brightest comet. It's not the biggest, but it is the most storied. It was the first comet ever predicted, the first to prove that the sky follows rules, that even beauty has math behind it. And now, once again, it comes back into view. For most, it will be the first and last time a singular moment, one pass, one chance. Because the next time Halley returns, you'll be gone and the world will be different. But above it all, the comet will still return like a heartbeat measured in centuries. July 15th, 2067, two planets, one fast, one distant. Mercury, the closest to the sun, a scorched world of extremes. Neptune, the farthest, a frozen giant cloaked in blue storms, separated by billions of kilometers. But on this day, they will appear to touch. A conjunction, a cosmic illusion born of perspective. From Earth's vantage point, Mercury and Neptune will line up so precisely that they seem to merge into a single point of light. But it's a lie. They will still be separated by the full width of the solar system, a reminder that closeness is relative, that what we see is not always what is. To the naked eye, the moment will be subtle through a telescope, striking. Two worlds, so different, so distant, briefly becoming neighbors, not in space, but in sight. And then they drift apart, as they always were, as they always will be. Circa 2083, it's already begun. Two stars, locked in orbit, spiraling toward one another, one feeding on the other. A slow, gravitational dance of death. The system is called V Sagittae, and sometime around 2083, it will end. Because when the smaller star finally collapses into its partner, they won't just merge. They'll explode. A nova, bright enough to be seen with the naked eye. So bright, it may outshine every other star in the night sky. And for a few nights, there will be a new light in the heavens, a false star, temporary, violent, beautiful. The event has been predicted for decades. Astronomers have tracked its orbital decay, modeled its future. They say the moment is inevitable, a stellar detonation, not billions of light years away, but right here in our own galaxy, creation lit by destruction. And if the prediction holds, you might be alive to see it. You might walk outside one night and see a new star that wasn't there the night before. And you'll know it wasn't born. March 27th, 2092. Look toward Jupiter, a swirling titan of storms and stripes, holding more than 90 moons in its grasp. But on this night, something rare will happen. Ganymede, Eo, Callisto, three of its largest moons will vanish. One by one, they'll slip behind Jupiter's massive body and eclipse. Then another, 
then another, not of the sun, but of moons, not cast by earth, but by a world ten times wider, a triple occultation, a cosmic ballet unfolding in slow motion. You'll need a telescope, but not a powerful one. Even a small backyard scope will reveal the moment. Tiny points of light disappearing behind a gas giant, swallowed by shadow, then reborn. Events like this happen maybe once a century. They're not loud. They don't make headlines. But for those watching, they reveal something profound. That even in the outer dark, the universe still choreographs moments of quiet perfection. And this is one of them. Most people won't see any of this, not because they can't, but because they won't look up. The sky doesn't ask for attention, it just moves, and every so often, it offers a moment, a shadow crossing the sun, a star swallowed by a planet, a comet blazing across centuries, a nova announcing itself like a cosmic flare. None of it waits, you're either watching or you missed it. So if these events move something in you, if you want to be there when the next miracle unfolds, subscribe, join as a member, support the signal. Because this channel doesn't just tell stories, it watches the sky for you. And when the sky moves again, you'll be ready to witness it, to remember it, to say, I saw that. Because the sky only blooms once and then it's gone.